We start with a house cleaning at the Arizona Republican Party. Former party chair Kelly Ward and her team are out. Ward leaves behind historic defeats in two election cycles, an attempt to overturn the 2020 election, and apparently no liability insurance for the party. Last weekend, party members overwhelmingly elected Jeff DeWitt as chairman for the next two years. DeWitt is a former Arizona state treasurer who was a top Trump campaign official in 2016 and 2020. Welcome to Square Off. Good to see you. Good to see you, Bram. Thanks for having me. Uh, I want to start with Kelly Ward because she hasn't quite left the building. This is a, a lawsuit. You may you think you know she filed a lawsuit a while back to overturn our early elections, uh, our mail-in voting, uh, early voting. Uh, that lawsuit's still alive. And a couple days after you were chosen to your position, lawyers for Kelly Ward and the Arizona Republican Party, you now run filed a petition with the Arizona Supreme Court to keep that lawsuit alive. Here it is. You can keep it if you want it. This is the, <laughs> this is the petition. I'm sure I can get a copy. Yeah. I mean, this is the petition. <laughs> so will, will you now, as chairman, keep this lawsuit alive? Well, you know, it's the end of my first week. And, and the first week is figuring out where the bathrooms are and getting a copy of the keys and, and uh, email set up and a lot of that stuff. It's, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things to do. Uh, there's no question I'm going to reevaluate Every lawsuit, including that one, but um, in the first week, just haven't had time to do it yet. But there's but, no question that's going to... But as far as the message it sends about the party, wanting to overturn the way 80% of Arizonans vote, including many Republicans, is that a great message to send for the party? Again, we're going to reevaluate all of that. Um, you know, I, I vote early. I, after the 2020 campaign, when I was uh, uh, in D.C. for that, um, that on that day, I voted early. I used to vote on election day every time, my wife and I. Um, but I voted early. I voted early last time. And I like how I can go online and see that it was received. And um, mine has been successfully received. So this is something we're going to reevaluate, no question. Reevaluate. Do you think it'll go forward with it, yes or no? I'm gonna, I have to talk to lawyers. I just haven't spoken to the legal team at all yet. So. Okay. Uh, speaking of the lawyers, uh, campaign finance reports show that Kelly Ward appears to have racked up $250,000 in legal bills over the last two years for this lawsuit. Also, I would assume to defend her uh, from the federal investigations of the January 6th insurrection. Now that she is no longer chairman, will the party continue paying her legal bills? Well, you know, it's... One of the things that was a hot topic, you know, when I ran, when I, when I became party chairman, it, it was about a month-long campaign with the state committeemen. We have about 1,900 state committeemen, and I had to go talk to them. And some of the previous spending uh, was brought up frequently in forums and debates and things that we had for me to get this job. Um, there's a general displeasure with, with a lot of things about the previous spending that, again, we're going to take a hard look at. So, um, you know, I'm looking, really trying to focus us all on looking forward to the 24 elections and, and not looking backwards. Um, and so, but there's no question I wanna look at uh, spending. And you know, one of the things that I'm very good at is, is being very effective and efficient with spending. And, and I'm gonna bring that to the party. 250 grand on legal bills? That's a lot of money for a party, isn't it? I, you know, well, lawyers generally like to charge as much as they can, right? Uh, I'm not a fan of paying lawyers as much as possible. And, and again, I wasn't a part of the previous spending, but. I'm going to reevaluate all the future spending. So let's talk about you, your Trump connection, because that's what stands out to lots of folks. You yeah. were the Arizona State Treasurer uh, back in 20, elected in 2014. Yeah. Uh, you were also the first statewide elected official in the country to endorse Donald Trump. Yeah. In June yes. of 2015, I think. Yeah. And if you remember, that's back when both parties uh, didn't like him. You know, there was a time when both of them didn't like him. So uh, I, I, have a, I have a soft spot for business people that want to run for office. Um, if you look at a lot of my endorsements, I really like when people that know how to sign the front of a check instead of just the back come, come to office. Um, I think we need more successful people, uh, business people with common sense in government. And I'm not a fan of lifelong politicians. And so, yeah, you know, he was a, obviously a successful business person and uh, other people have supported since. Again, our successful business people. I think our government needs more successful business people to, to step out of their lives and, and come and serve. Well, let's, let's talk about that Trump connection and exactly what you did uh, for uh, Donald Trump and, and the White House. You were, seemed like you were more on the spending and operations side and not right. so much on the campaign side. Do I have that right? Correct. Yeah, that's about right. So you, were you involved at all in anything to do uh, with the attempt to overturn the 2020 election? No. Uh, 
again, I, I, I was the COO of the campaign. Uh, I, my, one of my main focuses was ground game, which is why I'm suited for this current job. Um, and I did make sure we're trying to use every dollar efficiently, which again, part of the current job. Um, so I, I was more on the operations side and, and all of that. Have you ever been investigated in connection with any of the events or no. questioned in, in regard to any of the events of January 6th? Not at all. No, not, at all. not at all. So was the 2020 election stolen from Donald Trump? You know, again, I'm trying to, to focus. So everybody likes to keep talking about that. Joe, Joe Biden, President Biden, has spent more time already in the White House than he's going to spend in the White House um, if we're successful in, in winning in 24. And so I am purely focused on winning in 24. I'm focused on the future, and I'm not even thinking about the past. So my job is to, is to get the Republican Party going in the right direction, going in the same direction, and go and raise money, register voters, get out the vote, and win elections. And I'm trying to get us back to those basics. So you can't say yes or no to a simple question, did Donald Trump w lose the 2020 election? I, you know, I ask people this. I say, do you have any conclusive proof that Joe Biden knows he is the president and he's in the White House? So... Uh, I don't know. So you can't say that. Uh, okay. Did Carrie Lake lose the 2022 race for governor? Again, right now, Joe Biden's sitting in the White House and Katie Hobbs is sitting in the governor's seat. My, my goal is to go win elections. That's my job. My job is not to litigate the past. My job is to prepare the future. And that's what that's, I'm just trying to do my job, Bram. Understood. Those are just real simple questions about a basic electoral process, and you can't seem to answer them. Well, you can't answer them. Well, again, so what I'm trying to do, we have 1.434 million registered Republicans in Arizona, and I'm trying to bring everybody together. And if I keep talking about the past, I'm going to keep splintering an already splintered party when I'm trying to get everybody together so we can go do, uh, look at the future and go win elections. You know, that what I really care about more than anything are Republican values like low taxes and growing the economy and bringing in jobs and making Arizona the best place to work, live and raise a family. That's all about the future. And so I'm not, I, again, I, litigating the past. Everyone's litigated the past already. It's not even litigating. It's just a simple yes or no question. And frankly, it's, it's reality. Is the party living in an objective reality here about who wins well, sure. and loses like, like, like I said, uh, look, like I said. Sure. So did Carrie Lake lose the election? Obviously, you know, Katie Hobbs is sitting in the governor's chair right now. And, and my goal is in four years is that she's not. So, you know, that's, that's all I can do is go win elections, right? See, and, and, I mean, it's a reality check. And I find it, I just find it hard to understand well, the, why, why you this, can't answer it. But it's also larger than that because this party over the last several years has been animated. Its core value is election denial. Carrie Lake wakes up every day and rage tweets about the election. You know, she you rage tweets about the people who run the election. And one of the offshoots of that is a very dangerous climate for the people who run the elections. They receive death threats. That's just one of the offshoots. But also, the question is, is your party based in any kind of objective reality? Well, again, you know, there's a lot of, you know, this is, it's just a case of guilt by association, you know, and look at what I say. I, I hope I can be judged on what I say and, and my words and all that stuff. The other thing, there are ongoing court cases and, and, you know, going about that right now, and I don't think anybody's going to want to talk about it until the court cases are resolved one way or the other, you know, and so I think everyone's waiting to see what plays out with the court cases. Uh, I think obviously we all know that election day was, was you know, had a, had a lot of, of mistakes and, and things going on and long lines and wrong paper and wrong size of things. So a lot of th bad things happen on election day. And it kills me that, you know, I guess one of the guys that testified and said, well, we've been using the wrong paper for three elections in a row now or the 19 inch images versus the 20 inch. I'm not, you know, however that works. And, and my thought is they couldn't fix it two elections ago if they had it wrong before. So again, you know, again, that's not that's not my focus. Other people are working well, on you, that. But my you, focus you are, is winning. You elections. are you are joining the election denial election I, deniers so? to form the base. Well, okay, let's get to the 2022 election. It was okay. it was frankly a wipeout for Republicans, wasn't it? 0 for four, lost the top four statewide races. What well, went it, wrong? What went wrong? Well, so uh, and go back to my election year, 2014. Republicans won every statewide race, right? And we had the two Senate seats. So. Obviously, right now, things haven't been going well for Republicans. We, the, the both Senate seats when I, when I was there, again, were red, now they're blue. And like I said, we had six statewide offices, we're all Republican. And now, as you pointed out, you know, four uh, have gone Democrat, which is one of the reasons I'm stepping up, is to change that. What so, went wrong? 
Well, again, we're, we're not doing the right things in terms of, of raising money, registering voters, getting out the vote, and winning elections. So I think there's a, there's a lot that can be pointed to that, and it's my job to try to go win elections, right? So now. That's, the op a, that's the operation side. If I answered every little thing that went wrong, we'd be here for 30 minutes. But that's, that's the operation side Correct. of how a party works. Right. But what about the actual political side, the message your party is delivering? And the message is denial. The message is we lose an election, we deny we lost the election. Well, can you we say the party, you're saying the party's doing that. But the, par I want to be the party base. Okay, so the cer base, certain people. The people, not a lot of people, certainly enough to put, help put Carrie Lake over the top, but the party base that also rejects a significant number of Republicans as rhinos. And, well, right? You, there's, you know, look, I that, say, that, that, there's a me the message, the content of the message, aside from just getting out the vote. Like I said, you know, like isn't I, that a problem for the party? Well, I, I think the fractured party we have, and, and, and we have factions. Like I think the Democrats have different factions too, and there's no question that's a problem. And that's one of the reasons I got elected. I gave a speech the night before my election to about 300 of the state committeemen, and I said, look, you know, I, I got a good laugh because I said, look, can we all just come together? and stop the name calling, stop these things, and row in the same direction, go win elections. And then in two years, when I'm not the chairman again, if you guys wanna go back to fighting with each other, that's your choice. And it got a good laugh, but it's true. You know, there's, there's an element of truth to that, that yes, there's no question, we have so many factions in the Republican party and so many different things. And I am trying to do everything I can to get everybody to come together. But you had now. candidates in 2022 who are actually driving Republicans away with calling them rhinos, Mainstream Republicans who have been with the party for years, rhinos, many of these folks could not buy the election denialism they kept hearing from the candidates. What are you doing to bring those Republicans back in? Because as you know, politics is all about addition, not subtraction. I and there was a lot of subtraction going on. I agree. Again, I wasn't the chairman of the party then. I just got elected right now. But my you first need, week. don't you need to analyze what happened to understand how to go forward? Well, analyzing what happened is I need to figure out how to get 1.434 million Republicans to vote the same way, as well as theoretically half of the party not declared, so what we call independents, to vote with us too. So there's no question, I'm gonna do everything I can to get everybody going the same direction. That's the You know, question. as I was putting this interview together, it occurred to me I'm asking the wrong questions because these folks who are being uh, dismissed by people like Carrie Lake and by former Senate candidate Blake, Blake, Blake Masters, they're the past. They're the party of Goldwater and McCain, and that's not the party anymore. Parties change, and right now this is the party of Donald Trump, Carrie Lake, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, uh, Turning Point USA, and Charlie Kirk. That's who the, this party is, I just, the base. Am I right? No, no, you're wrong. Then who? The party isn't about people, and that's what that's the that's the big, and that's where they're. It's you know, about people, the values of those people. No, it's and about the values of the party, brand. It's about the conservative values that I believe will, will serve Arizona best and serve our country best. Values like Wendy Rogers' values, you it's stood about, with her you know, again, in public. So you're going up to people. First. You're going up to people. It's not about people, Bram. But they're represent, about, this is about, who they're voting oh, for. These are their representatives. It's, again, it's about Republican values, Bram. It's about low taxes and bringing in jobs and, and you know, high paying jobs for Arizonans. That's what it is. It's about the values of the Republican party, Republican values. It's not about the people. And so. Everybody wants to pick out certain people and say, oh, it's their values. No, all of us need to get aligned, again, about Republican values, which are the values that are the bedrock of our country. And it's about coming together as Americans to do the, to the right thing. And it's about, again, making not only Arizona, but America a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Let's, That's what the value is. I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. Just a little inside baseball, but I think party members would be interested in this. Um, the chairmanship is an unpaid position, Correct. Uh, but it's a full-time job. Pretty much, right. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, pretty, a hard job. A pretty hard, a job. hard job. Uh, Republican activists have told me that Jim Lehman, former Senate candidate, uh, your former boss when you left NASA to come back to Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah, you worked for his company then. Um, party activists tell me that you are now on his payroll or will be on his payroll. I'm not. How? You're not? No. Will Jim Lehman be underwriting a salary for you? Because there is no salary. He, he had made a comment to, to a bunch of people saying that I, I, he wanted me to win. He really thought I'd be the best thing for the party. And he said, I will put enough money, I will pay for his salary in the party 
um, he thought the job paid. And I had to go to him and say, hey, Jim, this job doesn't actually pay. He goes, it doesn't? I think a lot of people think this job pays. So I said, yeah, you're paying for my salary as well as everyone because the job, he thought he would sweeten the pot for Arizona by saying, hey, I'll pay for his salary. So you're not working for Jim Lehman? I'm not working for Jim Lehman, no. Uh, are you getting any salary from anywhere to do this job? I'm not getting a salary from anywhere to do this job. Thankfully, I was successful previously. As you know, I own so, some, I, you know, I own- You're doing this free? I'm doing this free. And your wife's okay with that? I can't say she's uh, extremely happy about it, but she understands my motivation, and she understands that I, I really want to do a good job, and I want to bring everyone together. So um, I'm not sure if my wife voted for me to get the job, but she knows I'll do a good job. But no, this is an unpaid job, and, I, and that's why I told everyone I'm only doing this for two years. And, and I'm, you know, but I was successful before. I sold the company. I've, I've done very well for myself, uh, and so I don't particularly need the money. Uh, this is a big, you know, St step back from what I could make out there. But yeah, no, I just, I just want to do something good for the state and for the good right. and good for the country. Got to end it there. Jeff DeWitt, thanks for joining us. Best of luck. Thanks, Bram. Appreciate it.